campaigning Sandinista style. When President Daniel Ortega began his pre-election campaign at this rally last year, there were real doubts about his ability to survive. U.S. diplomats predicted the end of the revolutionary Sandinista who have governed Nicaragua since the overthrow of Somoza in 1979. But approaching the February 25th election, all the polls put Ortega ahead. A decade after he entered Managua in triumph, the 44-year-old president has forced his critics to dance to a different tune. A Sandinista helicopter circles over a rally held by Ortega's opponent, Violeta Chamorro. She is head of a coalition of more than 10 parties, which make up the National Opposition Union, or UNO. Despite being fueled by millions of American dollars, critics say UNO has run a bad campaign, and that Chamorro lacks the charisma of Ortega. For Nicaraguans, her connection with Washington and the US-backed Contra rebels has worked against her. Meanwhile, the State Department has alleged that the Sandinistas are running a dishonest election. The Sandinistas have violated their pledges and used extensively state resources and the state-controlled media in their election efforts. Instead of a national dialogue with the opposition, as the Sandinistas pledged in their August 4 agreement, they have intimidated opposition party activists. Violence, not legitimate appeals to voters, has too often been their preferred campaign tactic. However, charges of ballot rigging and corruption have come from both sides. Sophisticated and costly television spots have been a potent weapon in the run-up to the election. An incident at Mazatepe. Violence erupted when the rival sides fought pitched battles. The Sandinistas blamed UNO mobs and said one of their followers had been killed. In reply on its news program, UNO showed a very different picture of the same event. In the crowd were supporters who it was said had been the victims of a vicious Sandinista machete attack. Some of the international observers from the Organization of American States were on hand to record the scene. Meanwhile, UNO's television spots have been singing a hymn to liberty. About 3,000 UN and OAS observers are in Nicaragua to monitor the voting in what will be Central America's most scrutinized elections. At the heart of the tension surrounding the poll are fears of a renewed offensive by the Contras. Former U.S. President Jimmy Carter believes there is now a chance for lasting peace. Well, if the elections are, are fair and honest, there's no possibility at all that the Congress would renew any kind of assistance for the Contras. The presumption would be that the Contras would come back into Nicaragua, those who want to be rehabilitated, and the others you know, would find dwellings in our country, other places. So I think that uh, the control problem for Nicaragua would be uh, solved by an honest election. In the meantime, the Contras still appear to be active. Ortega claims some 2,000 have infiltrated Nicaragua to disrupt the election, crossing over the border from nearby Honduras. The taint of the Contras has been Chamorro's strongest handicap. In 1988, she welcomed to the office of her opposition newspaper, La Prensa, members of the Contra leadership. Some had been in Somoza's National Guard. This association in the minds of the voters could prove damaging at the polls. Ortega has skillfully diffused Western criticism of the elections by releasing 1,000 Contras and 39 former National Guardsmen. For the first time, the Sandinistas can claim Nicaragua's jails are free of political prisoners. Chamorro's rallies have been well attended, with voters being offered a free market alternative to socialism. The party's youth group is particularly active and is said to have been targeted for American aid. And in a country where vehicles are scarce, these UNO jeeps are the visible symbol of American money. 
Children clamour for Sandinista sashes at a rally called a Love and Peace Party. One of the strengths of the Sandinistas is their political organisation, which reaches out to every level of society. Because material goods are in short supply, the children make their own fun with sports, dancing, races and games. There is also a puppet group which traces the history of Nicaragua. It uses a colourful mix of social comment and political satire. There are puppets of Somoza and Sandino, giving the children a strong sense of Sandinista history. And it is undoubtedly the sense of history which contributes to Ortega's appeal. Observers say the man has been transformed by the campaign. The rallies are organised like fiestas, with Ortega, accompanied by the local candidates, leading a motorcade to the centre of town. And if the opinion polls are right, Ortega will be riding to victory on February the 25th.